Hey, I'm Jeff Baumgartner with Light Reading Cable. I'm pleased to be joined by Mark Palazzo with Cisco. Um, we've been talking to some of the cable operators about Doxus 3.1, which is kind of the big news here at the show right. that it's even that it even exists and it's in the works. So you know, we can talk about it now. We can talk about it. Okay, and right. We're so happy to talk about it <laughs> with you. So uh, you know, as kind of a, as one of the leading suppliers of Doxus gear, uh, you know, as you look at Doxus 3.1, why, why does the industry need something like this now? Or why is it being pursued right now? So I think if you look at what's happening competitively in the marketplace, there's obviously a lot of pressure on increasing speed, increasing functionality, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with more traction on the IP video transition. We're going to need more and more bandwidth in the in the DOCSIS realm. And by starting to work on a DOCSIS 3.1 specification now, uh, it really lays the groundwork and the foundation to get to faster and faster speeds, pushing to one gig and beyond uh, from a downstream perspective. And it really helps to leverage the strength of the HFC network, which is you know capable of carrying up to six gigabits of, of capacity. So it's really going to be the next thing that accelerates the, uh, the growth in the HFC network. Okay. Now on the product side, you guys have developed DOCSIS from DOCSIS 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 3.0 uh, CMTSs, cable modems, you know, working on CCAP solutions. So, you know, one question that I have for you is kind of the transition from 3.0 to 3.1. Are you going to have to come up with like completely new CMTS equipment, new CCAP equipment, new CPEs? Uh, you know, how's the transition going to work you know, as you understand how 3.1 works at this point? So there, there obviously are going to be several significant changes between 3.0 and 3.1, primarily with respect to uh, the modulation techniques and the error correction and whatnot that's done. Mm -hmm. But we feel very strongly, and I think most of the customers and our, our peers and the vendor community agree, we need to maintain backward compatibility with 3.0. Uh, we can't you know, say to our customers, now that you have 3.1, your 3.0 stuff doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So maintaining backward compatibility is going to be critical. Uh, the ability for the 3.1 spectrum to actually bond with and utilize the 3.0 spectrum that's already out there is going to be critical. Uh, and I think what that does is actually will help to accelerate the transition to 3.1. Okay. So as far as backwards compatibility goes, so I mean, I can envision, you know, it's been discussed a little bit about maybe modems that can work in both modes. Right. Um, now, what about the, the spectrum? You, know, you mentioned that. So, so will, will, will the, the spectrum essentially have to be to coexist um, or can you, will it be able to blend it together? I mean, I'm still kind of trying to get it through my head how the, the backwards compatibility part of this is going to work. So it should be able to coexist from the standpoint of the channels that you have allocated as DOCSIS 3.0 mm -hmm. will be able to be bonded into the bonding groups of the capacity of allocated to DOCSIS 3.1. Okay. So you take the aggregate of those two bonding groups and it will significantly increase the size and the, the throughput of that particular piece of the spectrum. Okay. Uh, you know, back to your earlier question with respect to you know the convergence on CCAP and all this. Right. You know, from a vendor perspective, it's actually very good timing because, as you know, we're working on the new CCAP platform, the next generation of of the DOCSIS cable edge, uh, and it's really an opportunity for us to try to bring all these things together at the same time. So, right. uh, accelerating the rate at which the DOCSIS 3.1 spec gets finalized really understanding what changes we need to make are be critical to figuring out how quickly we can integrate that into our existing platforms. Yeah. And I know the specs aren't even done yet, so I mean a lot of that's going to dictate you know, future looking questions here, but you know, as you're looking to develop 3.1 products, uh, I mean, how far out do you think it's going to be before you know, we're going to actually start to see some? So obviously the spec is key because mm -hmm. obviously to, to, to implement this, particularly on the CPE side, you need silicon. Mm -hmm. uh, silicon has a fairly long gestation period. Uh, so the sooner we get the spec nailed down on error correction, modulation, channel bandwidth, et cetera, the faster we can move forward with the CPE silicon. Uh, I think the, the, the current thought process is as soon as CPE silicon is available, let's start getting that out in the field. It will coexist with DOCSIS 3.0, so it'll be okay. like a, a super 3.0 modem, if you will. Okay. And then once the infrastructure product, CMTS and whatnot, supports 3.1 from a uh, from a bonding and modulation perspective, then they can start enabling those 3.1 services in, in the field. Okay. So I, I think timing wise that's kind of the thought process I think on how it's gonna how it's gonna roll out. All right. Well Mark, thanks for walking us through you know the, the 3.1 path, at least as far as we've gotten, and we'll see where it goes from here. So I appreciate it. No, thank you, Jeff, and All glad right. we could finally talk about it.